We light this candle for peace, Lord. May its light scatter the darkness. May its flame be a symbol of hope. May its burning be a sign of faith, joining with many other lights of peace. Welcome. Welcome everyone to our Easter Sunday service. I'm the Reverend Cynthia Finity, and it's a real joy to be here with you this morning. During Lent, it is the tradition in some churches to hide the word Alleluia. And it is only allowed out again on Easter Sunday. So I've been using it as many times as possible. The first one was just before six o'clock this morning. And the official Easter greeting is on the screen in front of you. So I'd like you to try it out. We'll do it twice just to practice. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's try it a bit more. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen, he is risen, he is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. And it's now time for the Easter collect. So let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in eternity. Amen. Amen. We're now going to sing the hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia.
Now it is time for confession. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. In a few moments silence, I allow you to confess your sins. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! And now it's time for our first reading from Mark. Our first reading is Mark 16, commencing at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Simon bought aromatic oils, intending to go and anoint him, and very early the first day of the week. Just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were wondering among themselves who had rolled away the stone for them from the entrance to the tomb. When they looked up and saw that the stone, huge as it was, had been rolled back already, they went into the tomb and saw a young man sitting on the right hand side wearing a white robe and they were dumbfounded but he said to them do not be alarmed you are looking for jesus of nazareth who was crucified he has been raised he is not here look there is a place where they laid him but go and say to his disciples and to peter he is going ahead of you into galilee there you will see him as he told you they went, out of, they went out and ran away from the tomb, trembling with amazement. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Yesterday, my husband Eddie and I went up to St George's Church and created an Easter garden. The Easter garden has a tomb shape with a great big stone rolled to one side. And when you look inside on the stone we put inside there are the grave clothes just laying there with the head cloth and the body cloth. So that's what we did yesterday. But thinking back, to the beginning of Lent now I am and I'm thinking what I did at the beginning of Lent um, and uh, I used one of these what, what what happened at the beginning of Lent can you think well it was pancakes of course and I like lemon pancakes so I had and it was bigger than this one very big lemon and I decided to be very very good I wouldn't put sugar on it. 
I don't know whether you've tried lemon just on its own on a pancake, but it was quite bitter. And in fact, the second pancake, I did put a bit of sugar on it. I cheated. So that, that was my lemon at the beginning of Lent, a bitterness. OK, so we've got to today. And already somebody, and I can't remember, I can't remember everybody's names, held up one. But today I've got something else. And uh, do, do you think I should open it now? Yeah. I think you might know what it is. Oh, of course, you know what it is. It's a chocolate Easter egg. So what's going to be inside it? Anything? Right. Well, if any of you would have been to any of the other services at St George's over the years, most of the young children at St George's know the rule. Easter eggs were made. Oh, I knew I was going to have a trouble with this bit. to be empty. Here's my empty Easter egg. A chocolatier, and I think it was a Belgian chocolatier, found that because people weren't eating chocolate during Lent, he wasn't doing very good business. So he decided to make an egg that was empty to symbolize the empty tomb. So we had our lemon that was bitter, and somehow we had to have a lemon that was bitter before we could have sweet chocolate. But I do invite you, even if your egg and that fancy one that was it Iris? Did you have a big one? I think it was Iris. Yeah. When you open it, if it's got something inside it, it shouldn't have because you've got to remember that the reason for this is it's the empty tomb. Oh. Just a little bit now. And we're now going to sing our next hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. I did wonder whether to challenge you to find out how many Alleluias I've included in the service, but I'll let you off that, I think. There's too many.
the second reading is taken from Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began, I now understand how true it is that God has no favourites, but that in every nation, those who are God-fearing and do what is right are acceptable to him. He sent his word to the Israelites and gave the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. I need not tell you what has happened lately all over the land of the Jews, starting from Galilee after the baptism proclaimed by John. You know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Because God was with him, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And we can bear witness to all that he did in the Jewish countryside and in Jerusalem. They put him to death, hanging him on a gibbet. But God raised him to life on the third day and allowed him to be clearly seen, not by the whole people, but by witnesses whom God had chosen in advance by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to proclaim him to the people and affirm that he is the one designated by God as judge of the living and the dead. It is to him that all the prophets testify, declaring that everyone who trusts in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. As we emerge slowly from the grip of the coronavirus pandemic, with all its impact in terms of grief and loss, exhausted health and care workers, collapsed businesses, missed education, concerns for the future of our churches, and real weariness, perhaps the biggest challenge is our concern for the future and what is yet to come. I do not mean by this the possibility of yet another wave of infection, although we can't, can't know that, but rather the need to reframe much of how we live. Getting back to normal? There has been considerable talk, thought, and action under the heading of building back better or reimagining our lives or the new normal. The pandemic has undoubtedly exposed many of the deep fractures and fault lines of our lives and world, and not least in the areas of economic, racial and environmental justice and equality. There is deep thinking going on about what it means for all of us to live well. What the good life actually consists of. This offers a tremendous opportunity which we need to embrace wholeheartedly. During Lent, we remembered the time spent by Jesus in the wilderness, which itself recalled the, with the wilderness time of the people of, Ild of Israel before they entered the promised land. Although it was a time of much deprivation and isolation, it was also a time to remember the importance of worshipping God and not worshipping the idols, of trusting above all else in God's saving love, working in our lives rather than simply our own human efforts and of the importance of our spiritual life as well as our material well-being. It was undoubtedly a hard time, but also one of real growth. In short, we can learn and develop much in a wilderness time. 
What did you discover during the shutdown time? Particularly those of you, like my husband and I, that stayed indoors. I went through bookshelves. Need to get rid of some. What do you do with them? I reread some of the books and actually discovered an amazing one which I had in my shelf, which was a Sunday school prize given to my mother. An extraordinary story. I can't believe, well, I'm not gonna tell it to you. And then there was all the decluttering. Well, um, oh, too many jam jars, get rid of all the jam jars, that was easy enough. And then our fruit bushes. The gooseberries, I picked over nine pounds of gooseberries. And of course, I've got rid of all the jam jars. So how am I going to make jam if I haven't got any jars to put them in? Well, I, I did mention it um, on our Zoom thing at church and people came to the door with jam jars. But then I thought, I'm not really that fond of gooseberry jam. And if any of you have made gooseberry jam, it do you know what it looks like in the jar? It sort of looks like the frog spawn that's in my pond at the moment down the garden. Frogs have been very busy this year. So that, no, so I made three pounds of gooseberry jam and then I thought, I don't really want to make any more jam. And then I found this amazing recipe for making gooseberry relish. Now that was amazing. If you've never had gooseberry relish, well, you'll have to wait until I get any more gooseberries this year because we ate it all. And I did share it with other people. There was also, during this time, learning technology. I mean, over a year ago, I didn't even know what Zoom was. I don't know about you. And when I was watching, when we were preparing for the service, people were still saying, well, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And we've all been having to learn new technologies. So maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Then we didn't go out for meals anywhere. It's getting boring doing the same thing. So I tried to get recipes out and try things. Um, what did I try? I tried a new chocolate cake recipe, which was very nice, but chocolate cake's not that good for you, but it was nice. Um, I then, one of the things that we used to do was send out for a Chinese meal, but we weren't even actually doing that. I think you could, but we didn't. And, I, and we were saying, well, the favorite one is, is the, like the sweet and sour chicken. So I got a recipe out and I tried it and they all thought it was so good, I had to do it again. So that, that was a good thing. I'm still not totally comfortable with doing these services and things online. I don't know about you. And I mean, I do give thanks to Tony for all that he does because it must be a nightmare sitting there trying to get all these things to work and do those sort of things. That bit isn't easy, but people have learned things. I don't know that I've always missed the time that you have to spend traveling around sometimes. I've not missed that. Should have meant I had lots more time to do things indoors. I'm just sort of looking around now and thinking, um, well, um, we did do some jigsaw puzzles, particularly during this last lockdown. It was too cold to go and do the gardening. So got the jigsaw puzzles out. So yeah. That was okay. We've watched quite a few bits on television and have I cleared out the cupboards? Yeah, didn't feel like doing it. So, do we make this time a positive time? How is it going to be as we start to come back to our normal way of life? I think we need to resist the very real, maybe understandable temptation simply to go back with how things were. I don't know whether you have found, but 
our, my church at St George's has found that lots more people have been watching Zoom and joining in a service that way than perhaps would have attended on a Sunday, particularly some of our younger um, members who've got children that play cricket, football or whatever it is on a Sunday. It means that we can present a service that they can watch a time when it's convenient to them. Going back to that first Easter, the disciples had to totally rethink their way of life and what they were doing after Jesus' death and resurrection. They had to relook at what they'd been doing. They couldn't do things the same. So maybe we should look at things and think, can we do things differently? What have we learnt? I shall still remember to do the new chocolate cake recipe now and again. I've learnt that. And maybe the Chinese, the, the sweet and sour chicken, that was good. So what will you do differently when we are allowed out again, when we are free again? What will you do differently? I think some people are going to find this next period of time extremely difficult. And I think we need to be aware of how we can help people to readjust, help them to be confident to perhaps come out again. I think some people are going to find this little bit really difficult. So we maybe need to help people. And there's much that we will probably want to do about um, um, finding times when we can meet up again, safely, of course. But there are many aspects of our 21st century life that do need to change radically if we are able to see a world of greater equality, justice and opportunity, not just of human life, but of all God's creation. This offers us a real opportunity to reset our lives and especially our relationship with God. Are there new ways we can do things? Doesn't mean we have to throw out all the old ways, but we might need to think of new ways. So what will you do differently? As we celebrate Easter today, let us pray that our lives and that of our church and world will be ever more deeply shaped by the saving love of God, made known in Christ's life, death and resurrection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It is now time for our intercessions. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world and all of creation. Alleluia. God, you are resurrection. Bring joy to your church as we spread the good news that Jesus is risen. Help us to proclaim this message with enthusiasm and confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alleluia. God, you are creator. Open our eyes to the first fruits of new life around us. The budding trees and blossom, flowers and new plants. Inspire our gratitude and renew our commitment to stewardship of the earth. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alleluia. God, you are strength. Awaken hope and perseverance in all who need to hear a word of life this day. Those who are hungry, anxious, oppressed, lonely, despairing or sick. And I think maybe you have some people that you wish to pray for and perhaps you'd like to name them now. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our yeah. prayer. Yeah. Alleluia. Alleluia. God, you are life. We give you thanks for all who are baptised by water and your word. Embolden all who share this baptised life and renew us in faith and in action. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our yeah. prayer. Alleluia. Alleluia. God, you are comfort. Draw near to all who grieve. Refresh them with the promise that you will destroy death and that with all the saints, we will be made alive forever in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Hallelujah. Alleluia. And we say together the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's now time to do as Jesus commanded us to do, to share bread and wine. It doesn't have to be bread. It could be a biscuit. It doesn't have to be wine. It could be your cup of tea. So I invite you to put in front of you whatever you're going to use. Um, I have bread which you can't see, <laughs> bread and wine. And while you prepare for that, we're going to sing the song, let us break bread together in the Lord. Bread together in the Lord. I forgot to mute. <laughs>
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall not thirst. Loving God, we ask you to bless this bread and this wine. We remember that Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat it to remember me. I invite you to do that now. Amen. Amen. Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you, in remembrance of me. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. You're not silent, sorry. And now it's time for our notices. Hello, can I just quickly add? Oh, it's already on the screen. Okay, thank you, Tony. <laughs>
So, my friends, be confident, be of good courage, and be in good heart, for Christ is with us, and he is risen indeed. Alleluia. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the risen Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those you love now and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.